Will home prices in Austin, Texas continue to crash over the next year? And how bad will this housing crash actually get in the long run? Because there's lots of people who have bought into the Austin housing market over the last couple of years who are getting wiped out right now due to these declines in values. So if you're a home buyer or an investor looking in the Austin, Texas area, you got to understand this data so you don't make a major mistake. And the first thing we're going to do is go on Reventure app and look at data on Austin. And what we're looking at here is a metric called the percentage decline in home value since the middle of 2022. And what do you see is that most of these zip codes in Austin have had a 17 to 20% drop in prices over the last two years. Like take a look at this, everyone. 21% decline here south of downtown. 19% decline in values out in Maynard. 18% decline in values in Round Rock. With these values now reaching levels not seen since spring 2021. So values in Austin are now almost at their levels three years ago. And there's a couple ways to think about these big drops in home prices in Austin. You know, on one hand, you could say, wow, a 20% reduction in values in not even two years is a major crash. And it's a crash that could get worse. Like that's a huge deal. But another way you could look at these declines in Austin is that, okay, well, prices in Austin went up so much over the last five years that some type of correction or crash ultimately was inevitable and that this is actually a good thing. You know, this might actually be a good thing for home buyers in Austin um, because these more affordable prices are making it more attainable for you guys to purchase a house. So I want you folks to look at this. Right now in the Austin Round Rock Metro, the typical value of a home is 458,000. Now that's still the most expensive area in Texas. Like in San Antonio, it's 283,000. So San Antonio is approximately 35% cheaper than Austin. Houston is about 30% cheaper than Austin. And Dallas is about 20% cheaper than Austin. So Austin's still the most expensive market. However, you can see that this typical home value in Austin was 552,000 in the middle of 2022. So we were at 552,000. Now we're at 458,000. And that represents real progress in terms of uh, accessing more affordability to the market. I mean, more and more people are now able to afford a home in Austin today than compared to two years ago. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's a good idea to buy in Austin right now, because it's a situation where you could conceivably be catching a falling knife, right? I mean, that's the ultimate fear, I think, of any home buyer or investor, is that you go to buy a house, and that a year later, your house is worth 20% less and you're underwater in your mortgage. I mean, that's a nightmare scenario that no one wants to be in. So how do you as a buyer or investor, or someone just interested in the Austin housing market, assess you know, where home prices are heading in the future? Because that's ultimately you know, what you want to know. That's ultimately what matters. That's uh, ultimately going to give you more confidence on when to buy is having an idea on if this crash in Austin is over or if it still has more room to fall. And to kind of answer this question of where home prices are heading in Austin in the future, I wanna show you guys a data point that I have available on Reventure app, which is the program I'm showing you in this video. It's a website that you guys actually have access to, and later in this video I'm gonna explain how to use it. But uh, this first data point I wanna talk about is inventory. The inventory of homes for sale. Because what Austin has experienced is a gigantic increase in inventory. Inventory is quadrupled from its lows during the pandemic. And when inventory goes up so fast, usually that causes a decline in prices because it means fewer buyers and more sellers. And so if we head to Reventure app and click on the for sale inventory data point, you can see right now there's 6,600 homes for sale in Austin. Now, is that high, is that low? Well, you could see 6,600 for February. This is the highest inventory level in February that Austin has experienced going back to 2017. So that's a very high level of inventory. You can see it's more than four times uh, the low that occurred in 2022. And this higher inventory level, which is now significantly above the long-term average, suggests that prices will keep going down in Austin. This higher inventory suggests that, as well as a metric called price cut percentage. You can see that this is the percentage of total listings that had a price reduction according to realtor.com. And this metric is extremely important to understand because, you know, on one hand, inventory is just telling you like how many homes are for sale. But what the price cut percentage is telling you as a buyer and investor tracking the market 
is what's happening on those listings. Are sellers cutting the price? Well, if lots of sellers are cutting the price, that's indicative of what I call selling pressure. These sellers are feeling uh, more pressure to sell. They're saying, okay, I'm not gonna wait for a buyer. I'm gonna reduce the price right now. And you can see this price cut percentage in Austin is 30% right now, 30%. It's down a little from where it was last year, but you can see 30% still very high for February. It's well above the long-term average of 19%. And again, it's four times higher than it was two years ago. So you can see how much the market has changed. And so, wow, folks, we see more inventory. We see more price cuts. We say home prices in Austin are likely to continue to decline over the next six to 12 months, short of some like massive intervention in the market. I mean, if the Federal Reserve were to cut interest rates by 3% this year and mortgage rates were to go down to 4%, like, okay, some of this calculation could change. But right now, what the data is saying is that prices in Austin are likely to continue to drop and this will still kind of be a soft market for a while. In Williamson and Travis County, everyone, we can see these are the two counties in the Austin Metro where we're seeing the highest rate of price cuts. 30% of the sellers in these markets have cut the price. Additionally, we can see Travis County has the highest inventory surplus. So there's a data point here on Reventure app that you guys should definitely take a look at. It's called the inventory surplus or deficit. And this is a metric comparing the inventory of active listings in the most recent month compared to the long-term average. And what this data point is saying is that in Travis County, inventory is 50% higher than normal. Right now, there's 3,500 homes for sale in Travis County. Long-term average is 2,300, so we have way more inventory in Travis County. Also, lots of inventory in Hayes County and Bastrop County, and even going down to Comal County, which is more of the San Antonio area. But you could just see, like, zooming out, folks, lots of inventory, lots of sellers, lots of listings, fewer and fewer buyers in these areas in red here in Central Texas. And ultimately, folks, you know, one really important thing to understand if you're a buyer and investor is that it's not enough to understand where prices and inventory are heading in your metro or even your county. You have to understand what's going on in your zip code and neighborhood. There's one thing I'm continually amazed at as I cover the housing market here on the Reventure Market Reports YouTube channel is how differently different neighborhoods are behaving in terms of this housing downturn. This is very much a, a bifurcated housing crash where, you know, in many parts of America, in many neighborhoods, home prices are collapsing, but then in other neighborhoods, they're actually still going up. And you have to understand what's happening in your neighborhood if you're a buyer and investor. Because if, if you don't understand that, you're going to have an incomplete picture and end up, you know, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on buying a house in potentially the wrong area or at the wrong time. And what I like to do to get more of a neighborhood specific viewpoint is to go on Reventure app and just type in your city, like type in Austin and, you know, look at this inventory surplus and deficit. Where is inventory really high? Well, some of these zip codes north of Austin, inventory is 100% higher than long-term norms. Uh, some of these inventory, uh, some of these zip codes south of Austin, inventory is 100% higher than long-term norms. I, I want to show you guys actually what that looks like. Like here in 78745, the number of homes for sale is 164 homes for sale. The long-term average is 81. So we have a level of inventory and homes for sale and supply on the market that we have like, like not seen in the last decade, which is why this zip code has a home price forecast score of 23 on Reventure app suggesting that prices will go down. And, you know, there's multiple ways to think about buying in an area like this if you're a buyer. You know, on one hand, you could say to yourself, oh, like this would be good because it means, you know, you're going to have more opportunity, right? If you buy into a, an area where inventory is exploded, there's going to be more sellers cutting the price. Prices are going to go down and will likely continue to go down. But that creates some risk. <laughs> if you buy into an area where inventory is going off the charts... That could mean that after you buy, prices are still going to continue to drop and drop by quite a bit. And we can see, you know, in most areas in Austin, the inventory is way up, you know, going out to Elgin in the east, inventory is up 112 percent. If we go to uh, some areas like in Dripping Springs, inventory is up 50 percent. But there are places where inventory actually, you know, is not as high. We have a zip code here, 78735, 
where the inventory surplus is only 4%, you know, 37 homes on the market, um, you know, actually that's much less than it was a couple years ago. And so maybe this zip code will hold up better. Maybe the prices will stabilize in this type of area sooner. Now, of course, everyone predicting where home prices are heading in the future is not an exact science. Lots of things can change over the next year. However, it's important to educate yourself on what this data is saying. Because if you don't, and you're a buyer and investor, I mean, you're walking in blind to purchasing a property. I mean, you're just gonna be jerked around by whatever realtors tell you or by whatever you hear on the uh, cable news. Uh, it's much better to have a handle on the inventory trends and the uh, price cut trends, as well as how overvalued your housing market is. And this is another data point I'm gonna talk about here. And I know I've thrown a lot kind of at you guys here on the Austin housing market, but uh, this is a data point you also really need to understand. How over or undervalued home prices are in your city and zip code. Because understanding the levels of overvaluation is gonna help you understand how much more prices could fall into the future just from a percentage perspective. If you go on Reventure app and change the data point to overvaluation rate, you can see home prices in Austin are 17% overvalued at the metro level. 17% uh, overvalued at the metro level, which is actually now making Austin look not as overvalued as some of these other Texas housing markets. Like Houston's 26% overvalued, San Antonio's 19% overvalued, Dallas is 34% overvalued. So Dallas is two times as overvalued right now as Austin. And in a second, I can explain why that is. But you can see this overvaluation rate in Austin. Well, it peaked two years ago at 44%. Austin was 44% overvalued two years ago. And before the pandemic, it was actually fairly valued. Meaning that like 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019 in Austin, the prices went up, but it more or less matched the level of income growth. It was a you know good time to buy. Then it became not a good time to buy. Prices spiked, heavily overvalued, and now you know this correction and crash is taking place and reducing the level of overvaluation to 17%. So what this says is there's still downside in Austin for sure, but there's less downside than there was two years ago. And what I would be looking for as a buyer and investor potentially is tracking this data month by month and saying like, okay, can we get to a point where the overvaluation gets closer to uh, you know, this, this, this line, this fairly valued line. And if we get closer to here, we feel better about the fact that prices aren't gonna drop as much in the future. To access all that data, head to www.reventure.app. This is the web application that I have developed to help you guys as home buyers or investors uh, make a more educated decision on the market. You can type in Austin or any other city and immediately start accessing the data. Several of these data points are free, like home value and home value growth. However, if you want access to the home value to income ratio, the overvaluation rate, as well as the inventory surplus and price cuts, you're going to need to sign up for a premium plan. The cost of that premium plan is $39 a month, which is ultimately very affordable compared to the cost of buying a house. Additionally, if you uh, want to research this data over the long term and get a discount, I would encourage you to sign up for the annual pass, $399 per year. You're going to save 15% on that monthly cost. And you'll be able to track these data points month by month. So you can see when we get to these thresholds of when it's about to be you know, a good time to buy. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Head to www.reventure.app and stay tuned for my next housing market deep dive coming out shortly.